Intel cares about you and is doing a really good thing for the consumer with their new GPUs and that NVIDIA would like never dare to. And are you in programming? Cause uh, you might not be for very much longer. And the Steam Deck gets even freaking better with more verified games. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So I just wanna say thank you to everybody who tuned into our meme review yesterday live over on Twitch. It was an exciting time. I've had a lot of fun. We'll be seeing that video go live on our second channel sometime shortly. But in case you want to participate, you can submit your memes or your tech memes for next week's meme review at the link for a subreddit in the video description. But we're going to link on over. This is called a segue. It's a linking of two topics with words on a subject matter line that I just lost the plot. But we're going to talk about how Intel is doing something that's beneficial for the consumer that I wish NVIDIA would do. And AMD kind of does as well. It looks like they might be opening up their GPU driver development so that it could be made for other things besides the things that Intel makes. This is because they released an RFC patch on their Linux kernel graphics drivers, which allows you to develop third party discrete GPU drivers for non x86 architectures. And let me remind you that Intel only makes x86 architectures. They might make other stuff. No, they make like FPGAs and stuff. Anyways, my point, my point mostly stands. All right. If you get an Intel GPU, you're you're likely going to be pairing it with an Intel CPU that has x86 support, but this would allow it so that Intel GPUs could have drivers developed for things like ARM or RISC-V or something else like a PlayStation 5 maybe somehow, I don't know. If we ever get it so that the PS5 could run Linux and then you could put an Intel GPU on it, that would be my, oh man, I'll just, I'm having a great time thinking about it. Anyways, this seems to be a great thing for the community with one of Intel's engineers saying thought maybe Maybe the approach might interest the ARM port guys, which just shows that Intel might be taking a different approach besides the gobble gobble, it's all mine, I'm gonna go into Monopoly and make everything first party proprietary, which seems to be the approach of Nvidia. Maybe they are actually pursuing things for the common good. This isn't the first time that Intel has released features that are good for the average consumer before companies like Nvidia have done it. Obviously, AMD does also have some sort of open source setup for their drivers when it comes to developing on Linux, which is why there's been some work on getting AMD GPUs to work on RISC-V, but it does appear that Intel is actually putting the right foot forward before we even get their GPUs out there. Let me know what you would pair your Intel GPU with. That's not an Intel CPU down below in the comments. But Intel doesn't think, all right, that they are just alone in all of this. They have at least the CEO, Pat Gelsinger, has a lot of big words, as he always does when it comes to the competition. Comparing the battle between Intel Xeon and AMD's Epix chips to to a knife fight in a phone booth, which just, I, for whatever reason, harkens back the imagery of the monkey knife fights on the boats in The Simpsons. That's just, that's what I feel like things are going down. This obviously now needs to be the meme that gets submitted to meme review. Pat Gelsinger as one of the monkeys, Lisa Sue as one of the other monkeys, and that's that's what's going down, okay? Intel talking a big game when it comes to all of this. He uses such vivid imagery saying that they're looking at AMD in the rear view mirror and that they're never gonna be in the windshield again. And now it's a monkey knife fight between the two companies. Wild stuff coming from the CEO of Intel, but also some better bug bounties in case you wanna participate with them when it comes to their project circuit breaker that they're unveiling, which is essentially just like having a time boxed event to find codes and all of the stuff that Intel is doing, including like, all of their GPU stuff, as well as all of the other drivers that they have there. If you find a bug, potentially get stuff from Intel for it. Giving Intel, Intel on their Intel products. I'm gonna give you some intel on today's video sponsor, which my friends is a favorite of mine for the last three years, which is Four Sigmatic. It hasn't been three years, it's been two and a half. It's two and a half, okay? I don't wanna keep going away my coffee brand ever since I moved back to the United States. Four Sigmatic does something with their coffee, which I find absolutely great. And that's, they put mushrooms in it, all right? Culinary mushrooms, my friends, not those types of mushrooms. But this one specifically has been my go-to over the last few years with lion's mane and chaga mushrooms, which just means that I have one cup of coffee in the morning and that's all that I have for the rest of the day. And this helps me get going, helps me thinking clearer and better with words and just the, the, the <laughs> I've like dabbled with a few other coffees since I've been back to the States. And honestly, I keep coming back to Four Sigmatic because of that mix of coffee with mushrooms just gets my brain going in the morning like nothing else can. And before you ask, no, it doesn't taste like the mushrooms, okay? It just tastes like regular good coffee. But in case coffee is not your thing, they also have some other things like this mushroom cacao mix, which has some reishi mushrooms in it 
it. I drink this in the evening to just kind of unwind and relax and get ready for bed. And it's my go-to drink of the evening. My friends, in case you're looking to either change up your coffee game, just give it a try, all right? You can use our link in the video description. You can use coupon code UFD Tech to save 10% when you're checking out with them. I've had a few people be like, Brett, I don't want to try this mushroom thing. Like, I've seen you. I see what you're like. That's just me, my friends. This mushroom thing, all right, it has nothing. I'm just, I'm weird, all right? Just try it. Use the link in the video description. And we're going to try talking about some crypto stocks because, oh, it's not it's not a good time right now. Bitcoin down 3.5% on the day to sit at 37.328. Just having absolutely rough start as of 9.30 a.m. Starting at 38 grand down to $37,000. Ethereum also having roughly the same decrease in the last 24 hours to be at 26.88. Dogecoin also having a similar drop to be down 2% on the day to be at under 14 cents. And, and you know who dropped something? Starlink. They dropped a premium version of their Starlink internet service where you just take their antenna that they give you, you set up and you can get Wi-Fi basically anywhere in the entire world because they got satellites up in orbit that are just beaming down freaking laser beams to your computer so that you can have that. Anyways, this one, instead of being from 50 to 250 megabits per second, this one's from 150 to 500 megabits per second with 20 to 40 milliseconds of latency because it's a bigger dish. It, it can collect more rays from the lasers. Look at that giant square of things. Well, it's going to cost you a pretty penny, unlike the original Starlink satellite, which cost you $500. This one cost you $2,500 for the freaking antenna and then $500 a month for the actual internet service compared to $500 for the antenna and $100 a month for the internet service, which sounded more reasonable. This is I'm not 100% sure who this is for unless it's data heavy people out in the wilderness who are doing really weird things. The only thing that I really want to know is does this work on the go? Because if I could drive across the United States having this in the back seat of my Model X so that I could actually just do the charity cannonball that I did last year, but have all the good internets, I, I would honestly have to spend the money because that's the best internet solution that I've ever seen. And it, it, it costs about the same as me combining all the other LTE. Anyways, that's I, I'm excited for that. However, the one thing that I did notice when I went to review this is that they don't include Ethernet ports on the new one, even though it's five times the price. The original Wi-Fi router comes with Ethernet ports and it's on the new one. However, the $2,500 one does not come with the built-in Ethernet port, but there's an Ethernet adapter available for you to purchase if you want to spend more than the $2,500 that they already made you spend on the bigger freaking antenna, which is just like... Ow. Making something significantly more expensive and taking functionality away to then add it as an accessory after the fact is so Apple, I'm surprised they didn't do something like this first. But Google is adding some of their stuff to Apple because the Google One VPN is now available on iPhone. iOS devices can now get the Google One VPN in case that's something you like and was maybe hindering you from switching over. It's now available for you. And DeepMind might be available to program for you in the future with them coming out and saying that's it. It's about as competent as the average programmer out there because they put alpha code into a series of tests trying to figure out how good it is at programming. And it had an estimated ranking placing in the top 54% of human coders. That means it's an average coder, which means it's, I mean, obviously miles better than I am, but that, I mean, you could have code written by alpha code and you want to know the difference. Why is this a bug thing that's here? Because because the AI wrote it. I don't know. I don't have time to deal with all of this kind of stuff. The principal research scientist over at DeepMind is not saying something like, hey, all of your programming jobs are in jeopardy because we're just going to use AI to do it. So the only good programming that you should learn is how to program AIs until we can program the AI to learn how to program AI. I know they're not saying that. What they're saying is in the longer term, we're excited by AlphaCode's potential for helping programmers and non-programmers write code, improving productivity and, or creating new ways of making software, not completely erasing the jobs that everybody told us were secure for the next 20 years. Because I mean, if we're going to automate all of the truck driving, if we're going to automate all of the coding, what's going to be left? YouTubers! Ah! What's gonna be left of games by the time Sony's done of it is d d live gaming services. That's at least according to Sony's latest plan that they unveiled in a conference call. They're looking to have 10 new live service games as of March, 2026. So just in the next four years, that's only five, four years away. I would have said six originally. Time is moving so fast. Anyways, this is probably one of the main reasons that they purchased Bungie earlier this week for $3.6 billion because Sony does have a clear lack of live service games. Microsoft has Sea of Thieves 
Series and Minecraft, whereas Epic also has Fortnite. And then Sony is left with what? What do you got? You got God of War, which is great, but it's not going to earn you recurring revenue over the time where people are just going to keep paying you and pay you and pay you. But two of the best Sony non live service games that I love very so much have been Steam Deck verified. My friends, God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn are now officially Steam Deck verified, which means that they should work exactly on the Steam Deck with no workarounds and want run day one, which just, oh, it makes it hurt even worse that I'm not getting my Steam Deck on February 25th, but I am in the after Q2 2022 phase, which just, ah, I'm gonna, ah, on out of this episode of Hot News, my anger and frustration will be taken away to go do something else while you uh, ponder your existence of what your life was like without tech news. Then I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, my friends, for more diddly doddly tech and news arenas here on Hot News. That was a bad close. Whoops.